Okay, so we're down to the last part of our series on thermodynamics. Um, again, I, I just want to make sure that you understand that this is more of a supplemental na lecture. It's always better to read books. If you don't have a book, um, go through the handouts that I would post on the Facebook page. Um, if you have any questions, ask me right away. And if um, it's hard for you to download the materials, just uh, drop me a message. I can probably just send it to you directly by email. Even these videos, if I can make them smaller. Okay, so we talked about enthalpy. We have talked about calorimetry so far. Um, our continuing point would be still Hess's law. And the idea that all of these energy terms that we have uh, been discussing so far are um, extensive. And in the case of internal energy and enthalpy, both are state functions as well. So the third um, extensive property that we're going to talk about is called entropy. So there are many ways of discussing entropy. And um, uh, most of the ways that you would encounter this is via um, a description of uh, disorder. So in most books, um, this is uh, referred to as a measure of disorder uh, in a way that the more disorder there is in a system, the higher the entropy of that system is. Of course, what I want to do is to give it a more formal um, discussion, for more formal, formal meaning to, uh, by saying that entropy is a measure of how many different states a system can actually access. So, medyo mas komplikado lang, but it goes with the idea na, kasi if you have more disorder, there would more, be more states that the system can access, and so people would tend to relate it um, easier to disorder than it is to the number of states. Okay, so energy, um, last time, is extensive, and so is entropy. So the bigger the object, uh, the bigger the system, the more massive it is, um, the more accessible states there are for the system, and so therefore, the higher the entropy. So the more, pa rin, the more the manier. So entropy ganun din. And like internal energy and enthalpy, entropy is also a state function. So state function din siya and extensive. Again, for the simple purpose of um, developing the discussion in entropy, let's just say that it is proportional to the amount of disorder. So, more disorder, more entropy. Okay, bakit natin kailangan maintindihan ng entropy? Um, una, describe natin kung ano munang ibig sabihin ng entropy in terms of the states. So, um, more disorder, di ba? More entropy. So, if we go from solids to liquid to gas in this direction there is an increase in entropy okay so the more kaya di ba um kaya normally sinasabi natin na ang tawag dito na kaya tayo kailangan nagsusupply ng heat uh, every time we create a phase change going this direction kasi yung amount ng entropy na kailangan ng bawat state ay pataas ng pataas from solid to liquid to gas so yun yung first na um, uh, impression natin sa entropy it's related to heat okay I'll develop that concept later basta just remember na heat actually causes the particles in the material to vibrate very quickly and to move very quickly and by doing that it's creating a lot of disorder inside so that's why the more heat you supplied to a material or to a substance tumataas din accordingly yung entropy niya okay. so it's also um, that this concept of disorder also um, works with transitions of other kinds like um, let's say na for example, <coughs> if 
you have a crystalline solid and you want to compare that to an amorphous solid, <coughs> oh, <bib. coughs> yung crystalline solid, an example is um, uh, salt, for example, kasi lattice yun, so crystalline. Kasi ang amorphous solid, ang example niya ay glass. So actually, pagkatingin na may arrangement ng molecules inside glass or yung particles inside the glass, walang the same regular arrangement that you would see in a crystalline solid. And so, in terms of entropy, mas mataas pa rin ang entropy ng amorphous solid. Okay? Tapos, in terms of ano naman, in terms of liquids, so meron din tayong pure liquid or substance na liquid and then we have a solution or a liquid solution and between the two mas mataas pa rin yung entropy ng liquid solution only because mas maraming components yung liquid na solution kasi mixture siya eh whereas ang isang pure liquid or isang substance isa lang so habang tumadaming components ng system tumataas din yung entropy niya don't mind the dog. <laughs> I hope na hindi siya masyado maingay para sa inyo. Galit. <laughs> okay. Also, if we are going to compare um, things like um, one molar um, versus 2 molars ferric chloride na solution, both of them solutions so aqueous to and aqueous din to then mas mataas din yung entropy ng 2 molar solution again, that is because entropy is extensive so the more material on one side diba dito, ang tumaas dito is sa solution kunya na aqueous to ang tumaas yung number ng solute particles ng ferric chloride so, mas mataas din yung entropy niya. Sandali lang, sandali lang. <laughs> okay. Never a dull moment. Alright. Also, if we are going to compare... Kunyari naman, if we are going to compare Oh wait One molar ng Sodium hydroxide solution Versus One molar ng ferric chloride solution Sige naman mas mataas ang entropy So, kung nakikita nyo na yung pattern by now Ganyan ulit. Parehas na 1 molar, except na if you break this down into ions, there would only be 2. That's sodium. And OH minus. Whereas in this case, if you break it into ions, there's Fe3 plus and 3 Cl minus. So, mas maraming ions actually na produce to. So, in the end, mas mataas pa rin yung entropy niya. So that's as far as yung mga states are concerned, phases are concerned. Again, um, sa gases, hindi natin masyadong problema yung comparison ng gases kasi once a substance or a mixture goes into the gaseous state, um, masyado na rin naman mataas yung entropy niya to begin with. That's, that's why we don't really talk about how each of those entropies in the gaseous state compare. So, um, doon naman, ang nagiging function lang is temperature. So, remember na since heat increases if, if heat increases rather the temperature also increases. So, tumataas yung heat, tumataas yung temperature, tumataas din yung entropy. So, between different mixtures or different substances, kung sino rin yung pinakataas ang temperature, sa rin yung may pinakataas na entropy. In terms of molecules naman, 
So, bibigay ko lang yung mga scenario sa so para masundan niyo ko ano yung pattern. Okay. So para sa substances and mixtures and the different states it's easy. The more uh, the more something of uh, something is uh, the higher the entropy. So yun pala yung rule and it applies even to molecules and uh, ions. Nakita niyo kanina yung sa ions in terms of ions in solutions. So the more ions produced in solution, the higher the entropy then. In molecules naman, so if you're going to compare two things like um methane and methane and ethene then yung entropy naman din compares this way now why is that? two things um, there are actually more bonds in C2H4 than there are in CH4 kasi dito apat lang dito ilan? 5 Okay, so yung pangatlo doon, ay, yung panglima is double bond between C. Okay, so mas marami yung bonds. Also, mas mataas yung molar mass nito. So yun yung parang rule natin pagdating sa molecules. The higher the molar mass, um, the higher the entropy. The more bonds there are, the higher the entropy kasi the bonds themselves would also move and vibrate. So more vibration, more heat, more entropy. Okay. So pero pagdating sa molar mass, of course, Ganun pa rin yung effect niya. So, kahit mag-compare tayo ng elements. So, between the two. Chlorine would have a smaller entropy than bromine. Or F2 and Br2. Dahil lang sa molar mass. So, nasusunan nyo ba? Extensive kasi yung entropy. Eh. So, the more there is of something that you can uh, attribute to, the, to, the, to a system, to a substance or a mixture the higher the entropy. Ganun lang ka dali yung rules. Um, again, in state changes, yung tumataas kasi dun is yung mobility ng particles. So, pag tumataas yung mobility ng particles, tumataas yung entropy. So, solids ang least mobile yung particles, liquid ang next, and then gases yung last. Pag sinundan natin ng plasma, mas mataas pa yung entropy nun. Or pag ginamit pa natin yung Bose-Einstein condensate, mas mababa pa yung entropy nun kesa sa normal na solid lang. Okay, in terms of chemical reactions, medyo kailangan mag-pay attention tayo dun sa reactants and products. Kasi, again, if we're just gonna write a hypothetical chemical reaction like this, so, kahit ano yan, ha? kaya kasi nulat ng symbolic A, B, C, D lang. Hypothetical reaction like this, it doesn't tell as much uh, kung uh, mataas ba yung entropy nito o hindi. Remember na, ano, yung Dinidiscuss ko yung entropy na parang hindi siya state function kasi hindi ko hindi ko inaano ah, hindi ko ginagamit yung sign na delta. Kasi nga pala yung symbol ng entropy. Pero normally pag tinitingnan natin entropy, kagaya ng internal energy and enthalpy. We use the delta. So delta E for internal energy, delta H for enthalpy, and delta S for entropy. But in reality what we mean is a change. In entropy, that would be the entropy of an initial state from the entro uh, to the entropy of the final state. So, when we're looking at chemical reactions, ganun pa rin. Tinitingnan natin change in entropy based sa products and reactants. Kapag sinulat natin, unbalanced yung chemical equation, it won't work kasi those coefficients na A, B, C, and D would tell us kung ano yung mas maraming um, uh, sa chemical reaction kung isang product ba or isang reactant okay pero this again is not a complete uh, would not complete our idea of, uh, or our criteria for judging whether or not a reaction introduces a positive entropy okay ang mahalaga is you take a look at yung states, kagaya nung kanina sinasabi natin, yun yung mahalaga so actually dito sa pinakita nating um, hypothetical chemical reaction kung saan side mas marami ang 
state na mas mataas ang entropy, then yun yung magde-determine kung yung entropy change ba is positive or negative. So, this time, mahalaga na we talk about entropy in terms of yung more technical na description nga na delta S or change in entropy. Later, sasabihin ko bakit pwede rin sabihin kong S lang. And sa internal energy and enthalpy, never nyo ako nakitang sinabi lang na ginagamit natin as E or as H lang. Uh, sa entropy, pwede natin gamitin na walang delta yung context ng pag-discuss natin. But for now, let's just use again yung delta S to mean na we're looking at a change. And in this case, a chemical change represented by a chemical reaction. So, delta S again would be um, positive kung the final state is more in, higher in entropy than the initial state. Delta S would be negative if the initial state has a higher entropy than the final state. So, sa tingin nyo, sa reaction na to, kailan masasatisfy na delta S ay um, positive? Okay. So, titignan natin yung coefficients. Kasi yun yung nagsasabi sa atin ng number of moles of each product and reactant. And would therefore also tell us kung saan mas maraming gas or mas maraming liquid. Kung saan mas marami yung state na mas mataas ang entropy. So, in this case, if C plus D is greater than D, so meaning na mas marami yung moles ng gas sa product side, kung mas maraming moles ng gas sa product side compared sa reactant side, then the delta S for this reaction is positive. Otherwise, delta S would be negative. Kung, sorry. Would be negative naman if D is greater than C plus D. Okay. So, ganun lang kasimple. You can also apply this for in the case where there's no gas and meron kang solid and liquid lang or aqueous. Again, ang aqueous na solution, mas mataas ang entropy kesa sa normal na liquid lang. So, ganun lang. Bibilangin mo lang kung aling side yung mas marami yung mas mataas na state. Ah, ulit. Bibilangin mo lang, ah, alamin mo lang kung anong side yung merong number of moles na, re, na reactant or product na in a state na higher yung entropy. So, kung sa, nasa product side yun, yung mas maraming moles ng compound na nasa state with higher entropy, then delta S for the reaction is positive. Otherwise, kung mas maraming nasa reactant side, then delta S is negative. Kasi final minus initial. Final in this case would be yung product side. Initial state yung reactant side. So, malino ba? So, again, kung kunyari, meron ka namang kung binago-bago natin to, just try lang natin. Binago-bago natin kunyari yung state. ginawa natin kunyari na solid plus aqueous solution becomes liquid and gas so sa tingin nyo um, saan magiging anong, anong entropy nitong system na to positive or negative so in this case it would be positive simply because the product would have more um, moles of gas and gas again is is uh, the phase that has the highest amount of entropy so kung kunyari naman naging dalawang ano to naging liquid to so ganoon ulit titignan nyo muna kung yung total ba ng C and D ay mas malaki kaysa sa total uh, kaysa sa value ng B then delta S is positive. Kung mas mababa yung total ng C and D, coefficients yan ng products, kung mas mababa yung total niyan kaysa sa B, then mas mataas yung entropy ng reactant side and so therefore delta S would be negative. Okay? Okay, so yan yung ways natin para ma-determine kung ano ba yung merong mas mataas na entropy. So, 
kanina nung sinasabi ko na mas mataas ang entropy, it means na delta S is positive. So, kung kunyari, from liquid to gas, that process, since tumaas yung entropy from liquid to gas, the process would have a delta S that is positive. Kapag ka, uh, gas to liquid, condensation, uh, mas mataas yung uh, again, mas mataas yung entropy ng gas to kung initial state yung gas, final state yung liquid, then delta S in that case is negative. So, di ba, nirelate ko sa heat. That's the reason why when you get from, when you want to get from liquid to gas, you must supply heat. Kasi yung gas, mas mataas yung entropy kaysa sa liquid. So, the other way around, if you want to get from the gas to the liquid, uh, pa, kasi since mababa yung entropy ng liquid, kailangan ma maalis ng maka mawalan ng heat yung yung substance kaya exothermic yun diba kasi ang liquid mas mababa entropy so mas mababa yung heat niya so from gas to liquid kailangan mag release ng heat okay so kung hindi masyadong malino yun just ask me um, again I'm gonna give examples in fact I'm gonna give you as well yung long twist para meron tayong papagpraktisan Kaway na rin mga asa po. Okay. So, bakit natin pinag-aaralan ng entropy? Now, if you remember sa internal energy, di ba anong rule natin sa, sa energy? Ang delta E natin uh, for the universe, hindi nyo naalala, universe is zero. In fact, it's a constant and we make it more... Um, more precise by saying that's equal to zero, meaning that there, were, there is no total change, uh, there is no change in the total energy of the universe. That's the first law. First law of thermodynamics. Now, does it say anything on whether or not a process would occur? Base lang sa first law, malalaman nyo ba kung anong mas natural? Mag-melt ang ice o mag- solidify ang liquid. Anong mas natural? Mas natural siya yung mag-melt ang ice. Mas madali siyang mangyari kaysa i-freeze mo siya. In freezing, you would have to input a bit of work, di ba? That's what happens in a refrigerator. Yung compressor does the work, uh, liquid turns into solid. So, you produce ice. Whereas, kung mag-melt ka lang ng ice, ilagay mo lang sa labas, iwan mo lang. At 25 degrees, mamimelt siya kagad. So, in fact, if you take that as an example, and uh, you can find a lot of different examples out there, um, if you're just going to take a look at energy, kasi ang melting of ice, and, ang tawag dito, and um, creation of ice, solidifying of a liquid uh, water, both have the same amount of energy. Magkaiba lang yung sign ng energy na yun, pero yung, yung magnitude ng energy are the same. Yun yung enthalpy of fusion natin. Okay? So, so that, that's why, na, uh, diba? at 0 degrees, ice would automatically melt. Pero at 0 degrees, liquid water would not automatically form ice. Okay? Uh, or near 0 degrees, rather. Uh, ice would melt. Near 0 degrees, liquid water would not automatically form ice. So, energy would not give a good indication of whether a process would become more spontaneous or more probable to happen. What we need is a better criteria. And we start off with delta S. Kasi, as it turns out, and this is the funny thing about law sa in, science, in the sciences, a law, is just, a law in the sciences is just like any law in, you know, in human uh, society. It's brought out by a continuous observation of things. And if that continuous observation is always correct in one particular sense, then it turns out from a theory, nagiging law. So, kagaya ng gravity. Dahil consistent natin siya na-observe and in different situations, na-expect natin kung ano yung mangyayari because of what we think how, of how gravity works, then nagkaroon tayo ng law of gravity. Uh, ano nga ba? Or yung mass conservation na lang. Dahil nakikita natin na parang kapag ka gumawa tayo ng reaction sa isang closed container, all the time, hindi mababawasan yung total mass as long as the container is closed, then we know for sure na 
even if we try that in some other place, other persons, uh, other people try that out, mangyayari din na nakoconserve yung mass. And so, nagiging law siya, law of conservation of mass. It also happens for the first law of thermodynamics. You can observe energy conservation anywhere, in uh, at least in the observable universe. Observable portion of the universe. And the same thing is true of what I'm gonna write right now. So, ito naman, yung sa entropy. So, unlike energy, the entropy of the universe daw increases. So, hindi constant ang entropy ng universe. Any change, at what this implies is that, kung dito, any change in energy inside the universe would only conserve the total. And dito, any change inside the universe would only add to the total entropy of the universe. So, any process inside the universe would simply contribute to the total. So, palaki lang siya ng palaki. Um, and if you ever have the time, try to read up on uh, Stephen Hawking's book regarding the death of the universe because of the second law of thermodynamics. Kasi diba, kung tumataas yung entropy, tumataas yung heat. And so, someday daw, mamamatay yung universe natin and it would be a heat death. So, bakit mahalaga to? Kasi apparently, gaya nung sa example natin sa melting ng ice, most processes that would increase entropy, that have an increase in entropy, or associated to it, an increase in entropy, are more spontaneous than processes that decrease entropy. Most. So, hindi pa natin pwede siya talagang gamitin criteria. Pero yun yung sinasabi ng second law of thermodynamics. This is the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah. So, hindi ko na isasulat yung part dito ng system plus surrounding siya kasi ganun na ganun lang rin dito. This inequality, yung zero here, pwede nyo palitan ng delta S system plus delta S surroundings. So, this is the second law. And from the second law, nakikita natin in some way na parang tama nga. So, ang inaalaw ng universe most of the time na mangyari ay yung processes na patataasin yung entropy niya. So, palaging ganun. Yun yung mas madaling i-allow. Pero hindi natin pwedeng gamitin na criteria lang ng delta S kasi meron mga bagay din na hindi ano, natural na na naging piece ang entropy pero natural siya nangyayari. Kagaya ng rain, di ba? nangyayari spontaneously yung rain although that's from gas to liquid naman so nang, kahit na yung delta S no, kasi gas to liquid di ba from higher entropy to lower entropy dapat yung delta S is negative pero spontaneous pa rin siya nangyayari there are a lot of factors at work in fact that would um, make it easy make it more clear for us to identify whether a process would happen or not and delta S is just one uh, part of that criteria. So, merong mas strict na criteria na magsasabi sa atin kung um, uh, kung mangyayari ba isang process o hindi. Pero, again, ang basis pa rin natin is this, that among those processes that are probable, yung inaalaw ng universe is one that would increase, inaalaw ng universe na process is one that would increase its total entropy. Okay? That's the second law. And by the way, before I go into the criteria on how to know whether something is spontaneous, I just want to note the third law. Yeah, so, para footnote na lang talaga siya. The third law of thermodynamics tells us that as T approaches zero, Diba? Again, heat. Yun nga yung simulat ko. Tumaas ang heat, tumaas ang temperature, tumaas ang entropy. So, the other way around, pababa. If T approaches zero, absolute zero to, ha? this is zero Kelvin. Then, entropy approaches zero then. So, hindi delta S, ha? entropy. So, this gives us a way of managing entropies as absolute values, hindi lang change. Meaning na since alam natin na at t equal to 0, s would be equal to 0 kasi limit siya. Ah, parang ganun yung implication nun. Then, all entropies above t equal to 0 would have positive na s. 
And so, imbis na sabihin lang natin na Delta S ang pinag-uusapan natin palagi. Dito, sa according to the third law of thermodynamics, remember na yung Delta would mean final minus initial. At ang hindi natin kayang bigyan ng absolute meaning dun is yung initial state. Ha? Kasi, arbitrary yun. You can always choose an initial state that is convenient to measure. And then from that, get the final state. And so, mas may meaning palagi yung delta kaysa yung value lang that happens for E and also for enthalpy 2. Dahil, walang way para magbigay ng absolute meaning sa initial state in the case of E and H or enthalpy. But for S, there is. Yun yung third law. Tinasabi na at absolute zero na temperature, S would also be zero. And so, everything beyond that would have a positive S. And so, yung delta S natin doon, can also be written more conveniently as S lang. Okay? Although, ginagamit natin delta S to give meaning again to processes. Na, kasi ang mahalaga sa atin palagi, yung idea na final and initial state. Okay? State function pa rin siya. Alright. So, in the exam, just expect na pwedeng ibigay rin sa inyo, yung implication nun, pwede rin ibigay sa inyo instead of delta S, bibigay na lang na S yung value or more molar enthalpy. Entropy. Ay, ito nga. Ang burahin. Okay. So, how do we know whether something will happen or not? So, instead of just using entropy, and instead of just forgetting about energy altogether, we use both at the same time. And by doing that, this is what people from long ago have come up with. We introduce a new property. Oh, by the way, yung sa entropy, ah, including itong didiscuss ko ngayon, applicable palagi yung Hess's law. So, papakita ko rin yun mamaya. We introduce a new property which is that gives free energy. So, this is again an extensive property and it's a state function. Okay. Gives free energy. Bakit natin siya tiyatawag na gives free energy? Si Willard ba? Nakalimutan ko yung first name niya. At name talaga yun ng scientist na nakaisip ng idea. And it's called free energy because that's exactly what it implies. So, it's the amount of energy that a system can give. So, uh, if a system is capable of giving energy, it is spontaneous kasi it would keep on giving energy until it can no longer give energy. And while giving energy, it gives itself the ability to happen. Okay. So, kung wala namang free energy, kung kulang yung free energy niya, so kung may utang pa siya, then it would keep getting energy for it to happen until it doesn't need free energy, uh, until it doesn't need energy anymore. Okay, mamaya papakita natin kung ano yung sabihin natin. So, extensive siya, kaya yung state function, kaya sinusulat natin siya normally as delta G. And kagaya nung delta H, delta S din ganun na, we can also put a not to mean na uh, standard. Same with delta S, hindi ko lang nagbanggit kanina. So, delta H, delta S, and delta G, all can be measured at standard conditions. Yung delta E din, except na hindi natin ginagamit yun sa KM16. So, this is the change in gives free energy. So, unlike yung ano ah, unlike yung S, hindi ka pwedeng mag gumamit ng values ng gives free energy na G lang, walang delta. Hindi ka gaya ng S pwede because of the third law. Dahil, delta G is delta H minus T delta S. So, yan yung kailangan yung tandaan. This would not be given in the exam, hopefully, kasi parang daya na yun. <coughs> This you have to remember. So, Gatas. Siya. Agatas. Okay. Hindi magandang mnemonic. Pero para lang maalala nyo. So that's delta H minus T delta S. T here is temperature. Enthalpy. Change in entropy. Change in Gibbs free energy. Okay. So, balik ka pa rin panina sa sinasabi ko na <coughs> tungkol sa 
gives free energy at um, ano ibig sabihin ng free energy na phrase dyan Marayin ko lang ulit ito ha, tapos i-pull up ko ulit maya maya. Okay, dumi-dumi na ng whiteboard natin. <laughs> has to be dry. Okay. So, ito yung rules natin for spontaneity. Hindi ko lang kung tapos spelling ko. So, spontaneous meaning na can happen. With ease, spontaneous. Okay. The rule is that if delta G is greater than zero, then spontaneous. Yeah. So I think I said it earlier. If delta G, ah, sorry, malay. Sorry, balik tan. It's actually less than zero. So in ano rin na in in conjunction with our convention, di ba, na kapag uh, exothermic or nagre-release ng energy, negative yung sign. So, ganun din delta G. Okay? So, parang exothermic sense to, except na hindi mo sasabing exothermic, ha? kasi ang delta G kanina, sinulit natin as delta H and T delta S. Yung exothermic and endothermic na concepts are only applicable to energy, not to entropy. And because delta G is composed of enthalpy and entropy, hindi mo rin pwedeng sabihin sa kanya exothermic o endothermic. But, yung meaning nito, halos kaperehas lang din. So, kung sa exothermic nagre-release ng energy, ang delta G na negative, nagre-release ng free energy. So, ibig sabihin, it has so much energy, the system has so much energy to give. And because it has energy to give, it allows the process related to it to happen. So, kung mga A process that is spontaneous has a lot of energy to give. Kaya na lang. So, kaya siya spontaneous. Kapag ka delta G is positive, non-spontaneous naman siya. So, the other way around. Kaya lang din sa endothermic sense. Di ba? You have to input energy. That's what an endothermic process means. Sa delta G greater than zero, so positive din, kagaya ng endothermic na enthalpy, Um, this means that you would need to supply energy to the system in order to let it or you need to supply energy to a process process palagi kasi may delta you need to supply energy to the process in order for it to happen so in either case kung kunyari dito no, it would keep releasing energy until when? dito naman it would keep requiring energy until what? parang Until what point sila? So, ito, kaila, ito palaging merong may mga walang energy until hindi nga na kailangan magbigay. Hindi nga na kaya magbigay pa. Dito naman, kukuha siya ng kukuha ng energy hanggang hindi nga na kailangan kumuha. So, kailan nangyayari yun? So, therefore, that happens when delta G is equal to zero. Siya yun. Siya yung causing point. So, in the sense that the process is spontaneous, that's delta G less than zero, just check if that's the recording uh, then mawawalan ng uh, magbibigay ng bibigay ng energy yung system mangyayari siya hanggang sa maging zero na yung delta G dito naman kukuha siya ng kukuha ng energy until makakuha siya ng state na delta G equal to zero which we refer to as equilibrium so this is our first taste of the word equilibrium Although ginagamit natin siya for chemical reactions uh, later on in the third exam as well. Equilibrium meaning na it's at a point where it's stable and it doesn't want to do anything else. It doesn't want to give energy. It doesn't need energy. It just wants to be. So that's equilibrium. And it's very easy to note how this would happen in terms of our mathematical uh, formulation of delta G, which is delta H minus D delta S. Konti na lang to guys, so just uh, bear with me. Again, pwede natin lagyan ng not. So, delta G not ang um, use free energy kasi pwede natin yung gawin sa delta H and also sa delta S in principle, pati sa delta E kasi lahat ng mga yon ay extensive and state function and so therefore, 
can be measured at standard conditions. Unlike Q and W, which you cannot measure at standard conditions. It, it doesn't make sense. This is going to pull it up again, delta G, is delta H, and this T delta S. Okay, sorry. You sit here, I'm going to clutter it a bit more. And so dito, papakita natin kung kailan mangyayari na delta G is uh, negative. At anong condition yun? Or kailan siya magiging positive, anong condition yun? So, <coughs> if delta H is negative, so exothermic siya. Imagine nyo ah, kasi the way we wrote the equation here, so delta G again is equal to delta H minus T delta S, it would be like a seesaw. You mag determine ng kung whether positive or negative ang delta G. Are the magnitudes of delta, delta H and T delta S. So yung magnitude ng T delta S and delta H ang mag determine kung negative or positive ang delta G. Kasi yung sign, direction lang ng CISO. Okay? So in the case na balance silang dalawa, yung magnitude ng lang dalawa is the same. And since may minus sign dyan, no? zero lang. So parang if this has a value M, and T delta S also has a value M, then that's M minus M, zero. Okay. So, kung kanyang delta S is positive, delta S lang, hindi T, ah. So, kung delta H negative, delta S positive, ano yung magiging sign ng delta G? So, kahit na anong mangyari, di ba? Kahit na anong value ng temperature. Since positive to, multiply mo, di ba ang temperature hindi pwede maging negative eh, kasi ang absolute na temperature is zero walang negative so, since positive lahat to multiply negative sign, negative din to so ito negative din for all temperatures so yan yung case na yung process, if it increases entropy and is exothermic then it's, it will be spontaneous all the time so kung kunyari naman na negative to at negative din yung delta S, ano naman yung mangyayari? Negative siya, negative yung delta S. So, kung negative to, yung multiply mo sa positive, negative pa rin, yung multiply mo sa negative sign, so magiging positive na to. Diba? Kung negative yung delta S, positive na itong lahat, kasama na yung sign. So, that's a positive value and a negative value. So, depende kung sino mas malaki ang magdetermine kung ano yung delta G. Kung mas malaki yung magnitude ng T delta S, diba? since positive siya, mas malaking magnitude nito, kumpara sa delta H, then ang magiging delta G ay positive. Diba? Kung maliit yung magnitude nito, kumpara sa delta H, <coughs> then mas maglap, magiging negative naman yung delta G. So tingnan natin nali yun. Magiging positive ang delta G kapag ka, yung magnitude nito, ay mas malaki kasi sa magnitude nito. Diba? Kasi may negative sign. <coughs> negative, negative would make positive. Kung malaki tong positive na side na to, compare dito, then positive yung delta G, magiging malaki siya kapag ano, based on temperature, temperatures are high. Diba? Although ito, sasabihin ko, higher than a certain value. So if the temperature is higher than a certain value, then delta G will become positive. So, meaning na kung enough yung value ng T para gawin yung magnitude ng T delta S na mas malaki sa magnitude ng delta H, then delta G becomes positive. On the other hand, if T is smaller than that threshold value, in uh, su such that T delta S, the magnitude of T delta S, becomes smaller than the magnitude of delta H, then, delta G becomes negative. Kasi kung mas malaki na yung magnitude nito kesa dito, then magiging negative na yung delta G. And that can happen only if T is smaller yung sa kailangan na threshold. So, yung threshold mamaya, sasabihin ko kung ano yun. Basta ngayon, ito yung isipin nyo. Higher, lower. Okay? So, again, balance kasi. Yun yung tinitingnan natin. So, kung kunyari naman positive ang um, delta H tapos positive ang delta S 
ano na isabihin nun so kung positive to tapos may, may negative chart, sign ka dyan sorry then depende uli sa magnitude nitong dalawa as long as magkaiba sila ng sign eh. depende sa magnitude nito at nito ang magdedetermine sa sign ng delta G so nagiging negative ah, nagiging sundan natin ah sundan natin na alternating nagiging positive lang din to paano? kung mas malaking magnitude nito kaysa dito di ba? so kay kailan na mangyayari yun? kapag ka T is smaller than the threshold. So, kung dito, ah, sorry, wait to the point. <laughs> Just check, baka ako nalilito na rin. So, higher ang T, negative, positive siya, higher ang T, ito positive, ito magiging negative. So, So, ulit ah. <laughs> Bali, ulit ako nalito na. Okay, ulitin natin mula dito. So, delta G would become positive in the case na negative and negative parehas. Kung mas malaki ang uh, magnitude nito kumpara dito. So, mangyayari lang yun kapag ka mataas yung T. Mas mataas kaysa sa threshold. Kapag ka negative naman delta G, mangyayari lang kung mas mataas ang magnitude nito kaysa dito. So, that's when you have a smaller T. So, dito naman, kung positive para maging positive siya, kung positive ang delta H and positive ang delta S, is when this has a larger magnitude compared to T delta S. Mangyari lang yun, again, for smaller T. So, para siyang ito. So, pareha sila. Smaller than T. Except na dito ang effect is to become spontaneous. Dito, smaller temperature has the effect of making it non-spontaneous. So, ganun nila. Ah. In the case na parehas na negative, magiging non-spontaneous kung mataas yung temperature compared sa threshold. Kung mas mababa naman yung temperature compared sa threshold, magiging spontaneous. In the case na positive parehas, magiging non-spontaneous kung mas mababa yung temperature kumpara sa threshold. So, magiging negative naman ang um, magiging negative naman ang delta G. Therefore, kung mas mataas ang magnitude nito kumpara sa delta H and that would happen for temperatures higher than the threshold. And then, yung last case natin is when positive yung delta H, negative ang delta S, which in this case, because of the negative sign, would always be positive. And so in that case, it's non-spontaneous for all temperatures. So yun yung table natin. So again, dito, um, palaging spontaneous, in the case na parehas na negative, spontaneous lang kapag bumaba yung temperature compared sa isang threshold. Kung parehas na positive naman ang delta H and delta S, magiging spontaneous lang pag tumaas yung temperature above the threshold. And kapag positive ang delta H, negative ang delta S, it's spontane non-spontaneous all the time. Non-spontaneous. Okay. So, I keep talking about the threshold, but what does it really mean? Pag-ingan ba ito pala? Ang dami yun, ha? You can always uh, recover this um, properties, remembering na para lang talaga siyang balance. So, yung magnitude ng T delta S and delta H would be the weights of the balance. Depende sa kung ano yung mas malaki ang magdedetermine ng ano yung sign ng delta G. So, why do, uh, what threshold we're talking about? Okay, kaya pa. Tagalian lang. <laughs> Let's make sure I beat the battery. Mamaya, bila rin naman akong gilan. So, ano threshold? The threshold, again, is when the system doesn't want to do anything. So, what's that? That's equilibrium. If it doesn't want to do anything, at that temperature, we have equilibrium. So, how do we find that temperature? We set delta G is equal to zero. Okay, so, ba, yan ang equilibrium and this is delta H minus T delta S. 
rearrangement would give us delta H is <coughs> equal to T delta S. Negative, negative din. And so therefore, T is delta H over delta S. Okay. Yun pala, nakalimutan ko sabihin sa inyo. Ang unit ng entropy. <laughs> Kaya ko lang sasabihin. Units of entropy. is joules per kelvin. So, minsan, or, nilalagyan din natin molar entropy na joules per kelvin mole, and, or, minsan, joules per degree Celsius, or, joules per degree Celsius mole. Yan yung units ng entropy. Okay? So, pag ginamit natin yan, di ba ito, joules per mole, ang delta H. If delta H is joules per kelvin mole, Diba? Maka-cancel yung joules, maka-cancel yung mole, yung kelvin tataas sa numerator, so yung temperature units in kelvin. Kung delta S is given as joules per degree Celsius mole, then degree Celsius naman magiging unit ng temperature. So this is our crossover temperature. Ito lang kung yun tawag ng ibang lecture sa kanya. Okay, so at this point, at this temperature, um, the system would be set into equilibrium. So, in our case, kanina, di ba, whenever I talked about spontaneous at higher temperature, it means that it's the case where the process would become spontaneous if the temperature is higher than this. O, kung kunyari, sinabi ko naman na spontaneous for, temp for lower temperatures, what I mean is, it would become spontaneous if the temperatures are lower than this temperature. So, kinocompute yun based sa delta H at delta S. So, again, normally sinusulat natin siya na mayroong lahat. Anyway, yung units ng delta S, makikita nyo rin naman mula dito sa equation na ito. Kasi, delta G is free energy and so therefore, it should have the same units as delta H na energy din. So, therefore, kailangan matanggal itong temperature units uh, side na to. So, ganyan lang naman. Crossover, meaning na if you want to find the temperature at which you can achieve equilibrium for the process, you would have to divide delta S from delta H of the process. And do sa table natin kanina, again, whenever we refer to temperatures higher than T to become spontaneous, it means higher than this temperature, eh? So, kapag sinabi rin natin na all T, ano yung sabihin nun? Regardless of whether if the temperature is lower or, or bigger than this temperature, spontaneous siya. So, yun yung ibig sabihin natin ng for all T. Kung, so, kung kanya sinabi ko yung process dun sa table kanina, if the process is spontaneous for all temperatures, it means that it doesn't care about the value of this temperature. Okay? So, ganyan lang mangyayas sa exam. Note, however, let just check that in the exam, pwedeng ibigay ito ano, ano, in yung units kailangan ano, um, tingnan nyo mabuti ha, kasi typically, ang delta H are reported in values of kilojoules tsaka ang delta G din reported in values in terms of kilojoules whereas ang delta S normally reported in terms of joules so you still have to mind that conversion Hindi ka pwede mag-divide ng kilojoules with joules ha. Kailangan mo muna i-convert yung kilojoules into joules. Or, or convert joules into kilojoules first. Otherwise, mali yung lalabas sa inyong temperature. So, you always have to be unit consistent. And then, yeah. Okay, and then finally, for any process, I'm just gonna erase this again. The last thing I want to say, Although applicable lahat ng concepts natin ng Hess's Law, applicable sa S, applicable din sa Delta G. Yung gagamitin ko lang yung mas common na sinusulat sa libro. Ha? So the Delta G of a reaction is equal to the sum M Delta G of products, formation ng products. I'm just gonna use it like that. Formation yan ah, delta G formation. Minus delta G ng reactants. 
So, formation yan in the sense na kagaya ng Delta H natin kanina. Hindi ko lang sinulat. Pero, like I said, all of the things that you can do to Delta H, you can also do to Delta S, and you can also do to Delta G. So, yun lang naman. The last thing you need to remember. Again, take note of M and N. It has to come from the coefficients from the balanced chemical reaction. And that completes our discussion of um, thermodynamics, which is necessary for the second long exam. If you have questions, please comment on the video, um, or you can uh, drop me a message in the Facebook. Uh, in Facebook, um, I'm gonna post uh, um, handouts. I just check; it's still recording. Handouts and examples on the Facebook uh, group page para makita nyo kung type ng problem solving ang involved dito sa second portion ng coverage natin sa second long exam. Okay, so I hope you study. I hope you keep yourself uh, healthy. Stay safe. You don't have uh, to put yourself at risk just to learn. Uh, we can always wait for the classes to resume. But when it does, be ready na medyo hardcore yung learning natin na pagbalik natin. So, I hope these videos uh, give you a good enough guide para hindi kayo masyado mabigla. So, see you next time.